Okie dokie, today we are going to look at my inverter and what it does and why and how and what the differences are between them all. Uh, inverters, there's two main kinds, pure sign and modified sign. Um, the difference between them are uh, quite significant, but they get uh, it, the, the translation gets lost a little bit. Um, the modified sign is older technology that is described as in your face all at once or nothing type of deal as where pure sign wave is, is, is much more gentle and it, it regulates itself and it doesn't surge and, and back and forth uh, at such strong um, currents I guess I know that doesn't make much sense but I, you know if you look that up there's a million and one people that will give you their version of what I just said but it, it really comes down to if you've got electronic equipment with small circuitry or intricate circuit boards and whatnot, you're just going to want to have the pure sign. It's just way more stable, way more safe. Um, the, the modified still is used to, in in certain applications, I guess, these days. Uh, big equipment that doesn't have, you know, circuitry or microchips or whatever, welders, refrigerators, big things like that with electrical motors on them that don't you know it wouldn't matter what kind of sign you had or wave you had it wouldn't wouldn't affect it either way so they are used these days and you can buy a modified sine wave inverter and plug all your stuff in it even the electronics with uh, motherboards and it'll seem like it's working but what's happening is that circuit board is getting overheated and surged at and eventually it'll just melt and and cause you way more problems um, I wouldn't recommend you know buying a modified over a sine waiter for any purpose that I can really come up with because this will do anything that the modified would do but it definitely is not vice versa um, so the voltage on the inverters to use these batteries 24 volts uh, this company reliable electric is one of the more economical brands um, they're pretty cheap I only paid 220 230 dollars for this 2500 watt continuous 5000 watt surge 24 volt uh, make sure if you go, if somebody does order from these guys on eBay, the the reliable electric eBay store, uh, they, they they use these same housings, right, so that they don't have to spend a bunch of more money on everything. So they there's just a little drop down menu when you check out that you can choose the voltage, and it's critical that you get the right one. A um, couple people that I've talked to have accidentally ordered the 12 volt one because they didn't realize, um, but it definitely absolutely has to be 24 volt to use the leaf modules. That's the only thing that it has to be. Um, people then get uh, confused as to where the, they will be able to plug their 12 volt appliances in. And that will be a second connection, or an additional, not a second, it'll actually be like the third or fourth, uh, connection to the battery terminals. And you would put a 24 uh, DC step down box to 12. Um, they come in all different sizes. Uh, I think the 20 amp version, which I think would probably be suffice for most people's uh, 12 volt usage, um, was somewhere around $30, $40. Uh, so it's an extra little box. I mean, I don't have one, or I'd show it to you because I literally don't have anything that's 12 volt. When I, you know, started this system, I was building it from the ground up, and I didn't already have a camper, or I didn't already have a bus or something with a bunch of 12 volt stuff. So it didn't even ever come up in my designing of my system. Um, so I apologize for not having an example there, but I've talked to several people out there, and we have gone through the whole process. It's just a matter of adding that extra you're basically adding a 12 volt system on top of the uh, 24 volt one if you will you plug that uh, box straight into the battery the box steps it down to 12 volts then from that box you'd go to your 12 volt fuse box and then from there to whatever you know your 12 volt refrigerators or fans or whatever um, those boxes are nice because they can handle a whole lot more than that load terminal the, your charge controller will have a load terminal, but it's only going to mirror the voltage of your battery pack, so 24 or, or 48 volts. So plugging 12-volt things into that is not really, uh, well, it won't happen. It, you'll fry it because it, it's always at 24 volts, not 12. So in order to use the existing appliances that you have, or maybe you have, you know, want to buy a 12-volt something because they are more efficient in some appliances, but uh, it doesn't 
affect the inverter, as I guess what I'm saying, without making it sound too complicated. The box doesn't even ever touch the inverter. The box would connect to the batteries, and then the box would connect to the fuse box. You know, all it does is literally step it down from 24 to 12 volts so that you can use a... And once you have that box, you can hook like a 12 or more, I guess, uh, fuse uh, box to it, and you can run all kinds of things from that box. Um, like I said, it's just kind of a an additional system on top of the 24 so that you can continue to use all that 12 volt stuff. Okay, back to this inverter. We covered 2500 watts. This is the one that's powered everything in all my videos. You know, the lawnmower at the same time as the cooktop, as the same time as the space heater, at the same time as the air conditioning. You know, that's what inverters do, is it allow you, the bigger the, the wattage of your inverter, the more things that you can run simultaneously. A lot of people have a misconception of this number being or this number dictates what you'll be able to power and it kind of does to a certain extent but once you get over 2000 watts like nothing is legally uh, able or they require everything in this country to be 1800 watts or below so even if you had two 1500 watt uh, items well not two that I don't actually have two of those but to, to add them up to get on top of each other what I'm trying to get at is that you need a larger you need several appliances that are big like that's why I had the air conditioner the thousand watt uh, burner on 750 watt space heater and you know I was pushing in that one video I was definitely well over 2500 or 2500 watts uh, for a good 10 minutes or whatever so you know these are these are not exact obviously there's a little bit more muscle in there than just the 25 and they probably do that to cover you know whatever contingencies or redundancies that might happen but um, the, the inverter number does not dictate what you can power in most cases. It, it dictates how many things you can power at once. Uh, you know, think of it as the typical hair dryer is a thousand watts. So in my system, I could run two hair dryers and my air conditioner at the same time because my air conditioner only takes 400 watts. You know, that, that's what that number does. You know, if you've got a bunch of computers and stuff that are going to be on 24-7 or a computer, uh, refrigerator, air conditioner, water pumps, fans, things like that that could be kicking on, on and off on their own will affect that that wattage you'll you want to be allowed for that you know if you've got several appliances that could come on at any time on their own then you're going to want to make sure that this your your inverter is big enough to cover at least all those things that you won't be there to turn off and and regulate um from from here what you know the the, the inverter does just that it inverts the dc current that's coming from this huge 2 watt cable from my batteries and it converts it into ac or inverts it excuse me into ac 110 120 whatever you want to call it um, the, it does come with two plugs on the top of it here let's look at this uh, the, the numbers and stuff up on here. So that 124 is my voltage, 123, whatever. I have an, uh, 124 volts available for, or yeah, for the plug-in, each, each plug-in does. And the battery voltage is at 23.4. So it's, it's inverting that 23.4 volts of DC current into 124 volts of AC current. Um, these two plugins on the face of it, th th those are those two numbers, I guess. That's that's about it. Obviously, that's the on and off switch. There's two lights there. The red one will come on in a, in a matter of an error. Usually, when you when you trip the uh, the inverter itself or you overload it, it'll trip it, and it's got a, an automatic shut off in there for its own safety, so that. Um, it doesn't damage anything else. And actually, I've taken this thing apart, and there is eight inline auto mechanic fuses that look just like this. There's actually eight of them in there already, and they give you a handful of extra ones in case you uh, blow them. So there's there's fuses and, and fail-safes and protections already built into these things. Um, but... You, I don't know if you'd want to rely on just that, you know, the char between the charge controller and uh, the safety measures that are in an inverter, I, I feel fairly confident anyway. Um, so that's that's the voltage of the uh, battery on and off switch. These two outlets, now I see a lot of people plug in some pretty heavy machinery into these two outlets and don't ask me why, but every inverter ever made that's got these on there uh, or offers them as a, an option uses like 14 gauge or smaller wire to actually connect these 
capacities, these plugs go in here, and when they connect to the power source, they are only using tiny little 14 or 16 gauge wires. So that's why I really don't plug anything too heavy in. I plug this uh, triple thing in so that I can use little tiny things like that plug that's not plugged in is my power tool battery charger. I, it's not plugged in because it literally has a red light that stays on and I just don't that's like a phantom load that I don't need. Um, that cord back there is simply a lamp, you know, just a tiny little nine watt lamp. Um, and it's also got my cell phone uh, charger on, on that that's wrapped around underneath my bed so that I can charge it on my nightstand. But don't, you know, tiny little things that you want to plug into the, you don't want to, phone chargers, tablet chargers, camera chargers, those are fine, but you, you don't need to overload this because you've got the hardwire terminals and this is where you're going to be, you know, no, uh, hooking your uh, breaker box and all your circuits and whatnot. This, this is the same voltage coming out of here as those numbers. And so you can straight up take your Romex and hook it to these three and go to whatever your system is, is in, whatever you've designed it for, I guess. I want to come back around and show you that. Uh, if you're going to have a bunch of circuits and different plugins and a whole ton of switches, you're obviously going to have a breaker box and whatnot. I don't have a breaker box, and I'm prepared for the backlash of the internets when I finally post this. But my uh, my Romex just goes up and around and around and around and around to the actual box. Um, I've only got two actually on the circuit. I don't have a breaker. Um, I didn't feel like I absolutely needed one for those two outlets. Uh, Obviously, I don't, but they're both GFCI outlets, and they've got that protection in them. Um, I know that I'm going to get flack, but either way, that's my personal choice. Everybody else I've talked to is putting in breaker boxes because they're designing a much bigger system, and they will have multiple circuits and this and that, but I've only got 118 square feet here, and I didn't need a plug-in anywhere else. This is my cabinet, and it does more than I need. Between the two outlets and those two outlets, that's six plug-ins. Um, I don't think I would ever be using six uh, devices or whatever uh, appliances all at the same time. Um, okay, what else? Inverter, you're wondering what this thing is. Why? Because that is a really bright light at night. Even inside of this cupboard, it shines like an alien has been born inside or something. So that's what that's for. Uh, on nights that it's warm and I want to leave the cabinet open for airflow, that just covers that up. That's all the reason there. Um, the terminals down here are pretty big. Um, that allows for some pretty big connections. That's good. Uh, I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but there is a fan that's right on either side of those terminals. And so it will kick on. I've been trying to wait for it to kick on to finish this video so you could hear it, but uh, those are the connections from your battery. Uh, those big 2 watt cables, that's where they go. Because there's a potential of 300 amps that could go through that cable. Um, it won't ever happen because I don't think I could physically do that, but the possibility is there, so why not spend the extra couple bucks to get the big cable. Pure sign, we went modified, we covered that. I mean, brand names are brand names, just like anything else in the world. Uh, you're gonna see Renogy and Ames probably pop up on your Google searches first. Uh, I've never had e either one of those inverters. Um, I've never heard very good things about the Ames brand. They seem to charge more and uh, think they're cooler than everybody else, but I really haven't heard that many great things about them. They do make, uh, the inverter slash chargers, oh, which is something I should suggest, I guess. Um, going back to my system only has one charging capability, and that's the solar panels. I don't charge my batteries with the alternator or a generator or shore power or anything. Uh-oh, my phone is saying it's getting warm. Uh-oh. I don't know what that means. Lost my train of thought either way. Oh, I was going to, uh, the uh, combo units, sorry about that. Oh, hey, uh, my lack of, of concentration was rewarded with that sound that I was waiting for you. So now there you get to see or hear what that sounds like. It is kind of loud. Um, and so I, I can't hear it when I shut the cupboard of the, or the door of the cupboard, but um, it, there is two, three and a half inch, four inch fans in there. Either way. Okay, so back to what I was getting at on the combo units. Um, you can buy an inverter charger, which is an all-in-one unit, and they come in all different sizes and shapes and brands, and some of them are more than just a charger and inverter. Some of them are also a, a, a relay switch. 
Uh, there's definitely some out there in the twelve to thirteen hundred dollar range that do freaking everything. They're the inverter, they're the charger, they're the relay switch, they're the the, the uh, cutoff, emergency breaker, whatever. Um, so th just depending on how much money you want to spend, you know, I, I I didn't want all those other charging options, so I just didn't, I, you know, I didn't have to buy and didn't spend more money on a on a, a, a an inverter that could also do all of that. Um, I, I realize that for a lot of people that's a good that's a good option you know you got families and whatnot having plan B and plan C is good but the way I feel about it is if I somehow didn't plan well enough and ended up killing my batteries when I needed uh, actual power that's my own fault I'll wait for the sun to come back up but not everybody's in that situation and that has nothing to do with the inverter I'm going off on a tangent I think we've covered everything that we need to here uh, modified sign pure wave voltages I'll reiterate that you know if you order from these guys it's a matter of a tiny little drop-down box but make sure you get that before you check out um, again this is just a reliable electric brand there's many of them out there but this one has definitely served the purpose and, and went above and beyond so there's the inverter education <laughs>